Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to look at the OAuth protocol and how it relates to the uh, WSO2 API Manager product. Uh, so this is going to be a very brief introduction to the OAuth protocol and we are not going to go into too much detail. But it's essential to understand uh, the workings of the OAuth protocol uh, in order to uh, understand how API Manager works because the OAuth protocol is the primary means of authenticating uh, API invocations in the WSO2 API Manager. So the OAuth, OAuth pretty much stands for Open Authorization and uh, it's a protocol that's been built on IETF standards and it's been licensed to the Open Web Foundation. And the latest version of this protocol, version 2, was developed back in 2006. So it's been around for some time now. Uh, so if you look at the primary versions, uh, the primary features of the OAuth protocol, uh, now we're looking at version 2. Uh, it allows for secure API authorization in a simple and standard method for various types of applications such as web or desktop applications. And the focus of the OAuth 2 protocol is uh, client developer simplicity. Uh, and it provides specific authorization flows that you can use uh, in different application settings such as web applications, desktop applications, and mobile applications, or whatever other kind of applications that you might be have the need to use it for. Uh, so let's talk about access tokens. So the access tokens are the primary means of uh, gaining access to a protected resource in the OAuth world. Uh, so access tokens have limited accessibility and lifetime. And in API Manager, uh, you can obtain an access token to a specific API. Uh, so this access token is provided to you when you subscribe to that particular API. Uh, so let, let's discuss the actors that are involved in OAuth. Um, so this is a very important concept that we need to understand in order to understand how OAuth works practically. The first actor that I'd like to introduce is the resource owner. So the resource owner is the person who has the capability of granting access to a given resource that an application is interested in. So the resource owner typically is the end user who owns the data or resources. The next actor is the client. Uh, so in terms of OAuth, when we refer to a client, it's actually an application. So it's the application that is actually requesting the resource uh, and wants to actually get access to that resource. Uh, so the application is uniquely identified from you by a client ID and client secret combination, which is the equivalent to a username and password in terms of uh, end user. Next up in the OAuth actors is the authorization server. So the authorization server provides an access token to an app after authenticating that request that the app is making. And finally, we have the resource server. And the resource server is the server that actually hosts the protected resource. And it responds to a request that is sent with a valid access token and provides the resource to the requester. So now let's look at the uh, various auth uh, authorization flows or grant types that are available through OAuth. The first one that we're going to be looking at is the auth code grant type. So in the auth code grant type, the application needs to provide the client ID and secret when making its, uh, making its uh, request to the authorization server. The authorization server will then send an access code. And then the application will send that access code back to request an access token. And then the, the resource owner needs to get involved in authorizing the request made by the application to grant an access token. The next grant type that we are looking at is 
the implicit grant type and in the implicit grant type uh, the application only needs to send a client ID in order to get an access token. So as you, uh, immediately you notice that it's more simplified than the auth code grant type. And this particular grant type is typically used in applications where you cannot uh, guarantee the security of uh, the client ID. So it's usually uh, client side applications such as JavaScript applications that use this particular authorization flow. Again, in this grant type, the resource owner will get involved in authorizing to uh, the request to grant the access token. The next grant type that we're looking at is the password grant type. So in the password grant type, the application needs to include the username, password of the end user in addition to the client ID and the client secret in order to get an access token. So as you can see, because it's immediately has access to the end user's username and password. The password grant type is typically used by trusted applications. Uh, so the next grant type that we'll be looking at is the client credentials grant type. Uh, so in the client credentials grant type, we the application only needs to send its client ID and secret in order to get the access token. So this particular grant type does not require the resource owner to get to intervene in order to authorize the request. So this particular grant type is used uh, in machine to machine authentication where a human is not required to uh, get involved to grant access. And then uh, additionally, we have the refresh token grant type. So the refresh token grant type is not a separate, uh, you won't consider this as a separate authorization flow in itself because as you remember, access tokens eventually expire. And the refresh token grant type provides a mechanism to uh, get generate a new access token when the access token that you have already uh, obtained by some other grant type has already expired. So the access code and the password grant types return a refresh token that can be used uh, using the refresh token grant type to generate a new access token. And we've also got a special grant type called the SAML grant type. So uh, the SAML protocol is uh, a protocol that predates OAuth 2 and many applications have used this protocol to uh, authenticate uh, applications uh, that prior to OAuth. So there's already a lot of applications that are designed to work with SAML. And since that is the case, uh, for ease of use for those applications who already can get a valid SAML token, the SAML grant type provides a mechanism for exchanging a valid SAML token for an OAuth access token. So this means that applications that are already designed to work with the SAML protocol don't need to make any special changes for OAuth. And finally, we've got a specific uh, uh, grant type that works only in the Windows environment, which is the IWA NTLM grant type. So this particular grant type is similar to the password grant type, uh, but it's works specifically with the Windows IWA NTLM uh, authentication scheme. So that concludes uh, uh, today's training on uh, the OAuth protocol uh, and where we just briefly looked at uh, what the OAuth protocol is and what are the grant types that are involved and how it actually can be used. Thank you.